Do you ever feel like you're in a rut with some of the approaches that you're using with your neuro patients? Kind of like you're going through the motions again and again, repeating the same stuff. Well, if you're bored and feeling tired of it, then chances are your patients are feeling the exact same way. So today, I'm going to showcase to you four of my favorite, highly engaging, effective, and entertaining treatments that you can use in your neuro session tomorrow. I'm Emily Morgan, occupational therapist and co-founder of NeuroVlog. Welcome to the show. Today, I'll be covering a short demonstration of yoga, cardio drumming, poise spin, and boxing. Yoga, cardio drumming, poi, and boxing all have a growing body of literature that supports its many health benefits. And even though these are vastly different interventions, so it seems, they all are going after the same impairments that many of our neurological clients are suffering from, right? So some of the research that's come out has supported improved motor planning, proprioception, postural stability, strength, endurance, hand grip strength, dexterity even. And as far as cognitive functions are concerned, many of these have been shown to slow cognitive decline or improve sustained attention. And there's also several non-motor symptoms, uh, things that have to do more with our internal organs and our brain health, like improved digestion, improved lymph system functioning, reduce stress, and better sleep. So combined and practiced over a sustained period of time, this could really improve ADLs and wellness. You might also notice that these four interventions are not just used for rehab interventions. You've probably seen them popping up in adult community centers and senior fitness groups and maybe even in the classroom. So they're being accepted as approaches that work for proactive health management. Let's get into the four, starting with yoga. Now yoga has been around since the dawn of civilization and the research behind its many benefits keeps growing and growing. There are so many more ailments it seems to be helping with, and it's being used in lots of different special patient populations. I already covered some of the benefits earlier, but the point I want to make is use this intervention because it's engaging, it's effective, and it's entertaining. You can put away the dumbbells and the TheraBand for a while. So I want to show you, without further ado, a little demonstration. Modified in a chair with a table placed in front, we have cat and cow. In standing, chair pose. Warrior one. Warrior two. and triangle. For a little extra challenge, tree pose. Modified in a chair, we have chair pose. Warrior one, stepping forward. Warrior two, stepping to the side, gaze over the hand. And triangle. On the mat or the floor, we have in quadruped, cat and cow. Cobra, hands place wider, Sphinx, up 
dog down dog move through plank and child's pose so those were just a few basic examples of yoga poses that you can use in your practice on neurological patients. You'll just have to figure out what is going to suit them best. And again, think of the impairments that they're presenting on and choose accordingly. Now, I also wanted to mention that coaching breathing is important. We won't cover it in this video today, other than saying when you engage your client in deep breathing, it is stimulating the vagus nerve, which is a very long nerve that goes from your colon all the way up to your brain. And that vagus nerve, one of its functions, is helping with that calming response in the nervous system. And unfortunately, for a lot of our neurologically complex patients, they're in fight or flight all the time. So deep breathing and these yoga poses can help with the rest and digest that we're looking for to help them regulate multiple systems of their body. Hope you liked my yoga moves. Now we'll get into cardio drumming. Welcome to my clinic drum set. This is often how I stage my first cardio drumming activity. As you can see, I have a physio ball here, but I've also staged different size stools placed in front and to the side of my client. Now, you'll also need a set of something that would work similar to drumsticks. I have boom whackers right here, or I have a real set of drumsticks in case the client is able to hang on to those. I also keep a set myself, as I'm often sitting across from the patient, guiding them as we go along. So with cardio drumming, I often do this to music, okay? Because the rhythm of the music can absolutely keep the beat and keep the rhythm to what they're doing. This is a high energy therapy intervention, right? That works on a lot of different things at the same time. Now the song, We Will Rock You, is often one that I'll start with as a little tip. But then we can also change it to several different songs and several different patterns. I often have them working bilaterally at first, unless for some reason I just choose to use their affected hand. And then oftentimes I work out of sync. And as you can see, I have different colored circles placed on all the different stools. So if I wanted to, I could call out a color, red, and then they have to hit it to the beat, right? So, the next thing I want to show you is how you could do this in standing. So now we are doing cardio drumming standing up. I kept my drum arrangement exactly the same as the last video, but this time I placed the physio ball on top of a chair with armrests to keep the physio ball trapped in place so when they hit the ball, the ball won't roll away. Now, in standing, you can absolutely work on lateral weight shifting and you can even work on rotations. If you were to have them hit an object or target behind them, you could even stand behind them and hold one of your sticks or boom whackers for them to hit. You can go as big as you want or keep it as small as you want for the patient's level. Now, I do keep my phone on me oftentimes, so I have a playlist that I know that has excellent cardio drumming songs. And if that does not work in your organization or facility, you can always use a metronome or just plan accordingly for the main radio in the clinic. So the third treatment option that you might not have ever heard of before is called POI, P-O-I. And when you Google it, make sure that you are not looking at food, that you are looking at POI spin or spin POI. Now, it dates back centuries in the South Pacific and New Zealand, and it's used as a rhythmic dance or perhaps a game. Uh, the origin is a little bit of a mystery, but it is gaining attention in rehab because of its many benefits that it can have on balance and postural control and cognitive improvement. It's a very gentle, but very fun and stimulating activity to do. 
and it's popping up in senior centers. And I brought it recently to my clinic and people have been having a ball with it. So I'll show you a demonstration on POI. So here is a really brief demonstration of some of the POI moves. Now the POI that I'm using is really just a piece of cut stocking and I dropped a bean bag at the end to make it weighted. We made several of these because when you first start this out with a client, you'll probably just want to use one at a time, but then you'll want to put another in their hand and most likely you'll be demonstrating this with them and in front of them with you as their guide. So it helps to have extra. Now the most basic move that can be done in sitting or of course in standing is called a pendulum. The person will hold the poi in their hand and then they're going to just let the poi swing side to side. It's very gentle and the poi just really becomes an extension of their arm. You can do this small or you can do this much bigger depending on how much range you want. It's versatile so you can do it in a horizontal pattern and you can also do it in this front to back pattern. All right. Now if we added a second in our hand, it would look a little something like this. I'm doing the front to back. You can swing side to side. And again, you can make this as big as you would like. If the person is sitting in a chair, you'll most likely have to shorten the cord or else it will hit the bottom of the floor. So this is pendulum. So for the spinning move, you'll make your wrist and hand do a little bit more of the work. You'll go in a full circle and it doesn't take much to get that weight to go around. Again, you can do it horizontally or facing forward, or you can change the direction so you're tossing it behind you or in front of you. When we get into two different poi, it'll look like this. You can have them going in the same direction. Or you can have them going in opposites. So you can probably see that you can get really creative with how complicated you make this. It is very stimulating. It's working on dual tasking. And if you do it to music, it can be really, really fun and engaging. Please be sure to look up Poi Spinning. Hopefully this opens your eyes to an entirely different type of activity that a lot of your patients would, I'm sure, enjoy so much. You could do this one-on-one, -on -one, but imagine how fun this would be in a group setting if everyone had their Poi and you were leading them as they're all working together. I also wanted to mention that you can buy Poi on the internet. This is just one example. I found this um, on Amazon called Spin Balls. And you can actually do them in the dark. I don't know if you can see the color from the uh, video here, but you can change it into a strobe effect or pick your colors. And it can be really cool, especially if you've got several of them going all at the same time. The fourth, engaging effective and entertaining treatment approach that you can use with your neurological clients is boxing. Here we go. Get in the ring with your patients and tell them to get tough. Boxing is an incredible sport to watch, of course, but it's actually even more fun to do yourself. And it's funny how many of my patients see these gloves come out and they kind of go, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. Miss Tough Girl, all right. A lot of them have experience with boxing in the past too, or maybe they just need to let some aggression out. But either way, you can really have them bring their A game. Now, boxing offers rotational movements and lateral movements, large amplitude movements of their reach, and of course that 
weight transfer forwards to backwards is amazing. If you have them travel, that can be another challenging component, right? To the side, hitting something. If you have a mitt yourself, they can hit the target. And if you're lucky enough at your facility to have one of those standing punching bags, just set the timer for a minute and let them try to get as many reps as they can in a minute. So please have fun with boxing. Look it up, offer it to your patients, and have some fun. Whew. That was a lot of work, but it was worth it. I hope you had a lot of fun, NeuroNation. I know I did filming this, but I wanted to mention that it's okay to be a little bit nervous at first when you're learning some of these new approaches, but dare to be different and reel in your patient because if you bring it, they'll get enthused about it as well. And the whole experience will be just so much better and they'll want to see your face when it's time for their treatment session with you. And then another thing I wanted to mention is when it's time for discharge, because you already gave them a little taste of some of these approaches, if you find that any of them are a good match, be sure to give them resources where they can find virtual classes or even resources on YouTube or community exercise classes. There's lots of different options. So I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time, NeuroNation. Bye.